Welcome to day three. Today, we're going to start to wrap up the crypto capital gains tax uh, conversation, and then we're going to start to move forward from there. So what we're going to work on today is we're going to introduce the tax lot ID method. And we're also going to uh, talk about you know capital losses and tax loss harvesting. And I'm also going to touch on some of the incoming IRS regulations. So yeah, so before we start, does anybody have any questions or, you know, how, was the homework assignment okay? Was it easy to follow? Something like that. Everything good? All right. Then I'll just get right into it. So when talking about tax lot ID, tax lot ID is simply the method that dictates which crypto units you are deemed to be selling for tax purposes. So it's actually... It's not what units you are actually selling, but only the units that you are deemed to be selling for tax purposes. So for the example of like stamp collection, you know, let's say you're, you know, you're collecting, you know, these vintage like 1979, uh, you know, forever stamps, and you just collect like a ton of them over the course of the year, you know, and then later on you decide you want to sell them. Well, how do you determine what the initial value of the the stamp that you collected was, right? So let's say, okay, I'm selling this stamp, you know, how much was this particular stamp worth when I bought it, right? You know, without some record keeping or some method of just determining like what that would be, it would be very, very difficult to, uh, to determine that, right? So that's what the tax lot ID method is. It's just a way to kind of determine like, all right, which units am I gonna be selling just for the purposes of, you know, determining what, what my tax will be. Um, and there's four main methods. So the first one is, it's called FIFO or first in first out. And it's the simplest method. And what that is, is you take the first units that you purchased and those are going to be the first units that you sold. So if you bought, you know, some, some stamps in, uh, you know, in, in January, February, right. And then March, April, May, like all throughout the year, the very first ones that you bought um, will then be the ones that you sell for tax purposes. And, you know, typically, you know, you will be keeping track of when it was purchased and how much it was purchased at that time. You know, like our software kind of keeps track of that. So at least that's how it works in the crypto world. So then in the, the next method is the last in first out method. And that's the complete opposite of FIFO. And that's when your most recently purchased units are sold first. Then moving on, we have the hot, the HIFO method, which is highest in and first out. And that's when the highest valued uh, cryptocurrencies are the ones that you'll sell off first. And then the fourth one is specific ID, where you will actually like hand pick each unit that you want to sell. And, you know, LIFO and HIFO are actually like subsets of the specific ID method. But, you know, with, with specific ID, you need to keep very detailed records of like when you purchased it, how much was it purchased for, things like that. So an example of this would be, let's say you purchased a unit of coin A in 2021 for $100. And then you purchase one unit of coin A in June of 21 for 150. And then you purchase a unit of coin A in July for $75. Then in November, you decide to sell one unit of coin A and the fair market value is going to be $100. So you see here in this, this little uh, timeline I've got set up here, right? From April to November, you'll see in April, you purchased your first coin for $100. And in June, you purchased your second coin for $150. July, you purchased your third coin for 75. And then finally out here in November, you sold your first coin for $100. So which coin did you sell? <laughs> did you sell the first coin? Did you sell the second coin or the third coin, right? Like the IRS wants to know so that they can determine how much tax you're gonna owe. So that's what these. That's where this comes in. So you can choose which uh, method you want um, to to use so if you were to use the fifo method right and you were to sell off your first coin you would uh in 
in essence, generate a $0 net gain, right? So no gain, no loss, it would kind of net out to zero. And in June, if you, let's say you sold off the June, the coin that you purchased in June, right? For 150, that would actually incur a $50 net loss, right? And if you were to sell, use the LIFO method, you'd actually be selling off the coin in July um, that was worth 75 and that would net you a $25 gain. Um, I just want to note that the, the HIFO method, it's, it's not because it's in the middle, it's because the, the 150 coin, right, is the highest value to the three. So that's why we choose the HIFO method. And again, the LIFO method is the, the most recent one. So, you know, going by these three, the HIFO method, right, if you're trying to get the best tax advantages, the HIFO method would typically be the go-to method, right? And that's, that's kind of the general thing. Uh, the HIFO method is generally the best method in terms of getting the best tax advantages. Uh, because if you have, let's say you, you, you get like a lot of gains, right? It'll help kind of bring those gains down and it'll actually maximize your losses as well. So it's the, it's kind of the best method to choose. Um, the tip, people will typically go with FIFO if you want to like increase your holding period um, in order to uh, get into like that long-term bracket. So for example, you know, let's take this example, right? Like what if instead of April 21, you, you know, you, you actually purchased it in April of 2020. Well, then if you sold off the coin in November, then technically this one would fall into your long-term tax bracket, into your long-term rates. And in this example, I think the, the, the difference is not that much, but um, that's kind of an example of why you would choose FIFO over let's say, HIFO or LIFO, or also because it's just way simpler. You know, you just, okay, first in, first out. So these are the different, um, you know, tax lot ID methods. Before I move on, does anybody have any questions about that? Zhang Wun Gong asked, so people can choose whichever method brings them the best financial advantage. In other words, people can end up with different tax amounts, even if they went through a similar situation. Uh, to my understanding, yes. If anybody wants to like weigh in on this, uh, like I think Daniel's here, but uh, yeah, pretty much. So in all things yes, being considered, yeah. Oh they yeah, yeah. Whatever they want. Oh okay, Mark's here too. Yeah. Great. Um, yeah, you can choose whatever you want. Benefits of using LIFO. It, it would be like I think a specific case, like if the market is let's say going up, right? Let's say the market is trending upward. And, um, you know, you, you could use the LIFO method to, as since the market keeps going up, if you use your, and you just recently purchased it as the market is going up, then that would probably be the shortest difference between the, the original cost basis and the fair market value at the time you sell it. So that, that would be like the one advantage, I guess, or the one benefit of using LIFO, but that would also, but typically HIFO is the most common sense method to use to get the best advantages. And another question. So Cointelli software does this decision-making process to create the best outcome for users. Great. Thank you so much. All right. All right. So that's everything for today. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Thank you.